this is Ramesh from Tensorens Customer Team. In this video, I'm going to take you through the Metallium programming model. Metallium is the primary programming model for Tensorens chips. Tensorens chips are primarily aimed at AI and HPC compute. Here is the outline uh, for this presentation. First, I will go through the host side programming model. Then I would explain about the device side programming model. And then I would show a real code, which is element-wise addition. And then I would touch upon the compile time and runtime handling. Now, first, let's go through the programming model on the host side. As you can see here, the host and the device are connected through PCI interface. And the host program creates a device object, which has this command queue. And the command queue is responsible for the communication between the host and the device. And the device is a core grid. And all these cores are connected through a mesh topology. And we call these cores 10 6 cores. In this slide, I have shown one of the 10 6 cores. And each 10 6 core has its own SRAM, which we also call the L1 memory. And this SRAM can hold the data as well as the kernel codes that are supposed to execute. And each 10 6 core has five RISC-V cores. Two of them, RISC-V1 and RISC-V5, execute the data movement kernels, while the other RISC-V cores, RISC-V2, 3, and 4, execute the compute kernel in collaboration with the matrix and the vector engines. Now, let's look a little deeper about the command queue. Command queue plays an important role in establishing and completing the task across the host and the device. There are four steps involved in completing any test, any uh, specific task. The first one is the NQ write buffer API, which is used by the command queue to send the command from host to the device. At step two, the device which is waiting for the command from the host starts executing the command as soon as it receives the command from the host. At step three, the host would request back the results from the device. At step four, the command queue uses the NQ read buffer API to retrieve the results from the device back to the host. Now, let's look at the host side program uh, organization. What are the different steps involved? The first step is to initialize the program and the device. What does it mean? It means the host program has to create different objects. One of them is a device object that is used to communicate with the device accelerator. And then the program object that is, um, that is to be dispatched to the device for execution later. And then the host program is also responsible for specifying the logical core coordinates on which these kernels are supposed to execute. Next is the allocate device memory and initialize source data. So we have the DRAM, which is the off-chip memory, and the SRAM, which is the on-chip memory. So based on the algorithm and the optimization approach, the memory layout could be sharded or interleaved. So the host program has to clear that, you know, whether it is sharded or the interleaved. And then host program is responsible for creating these, uh, the buffers on DRAM and SRAM as well. And then the host program also has to initialize the source data that can be transferred from host to device later. And the next thing is the configure and create collaborative mechanisms. So we already talked about the command queue object, which is primarily taking care of the communication between the host and the device. But then the host code also has to take care about the circular buffer config so it has to define those circular buffer configs and then the corresponding um, CB objects for the data moment. And the host program has to um, 
create the atomic counters as well if required. The next step is to configure and create kernels. So the, the kernels are two different types. One is the compute kernel, and the other one is the data type, uh, data moment kernels. So the host program has to specify these kernels that needs to be executed on the device. And also the host program has to specify the course on which these kernels uh, are going to execute. Next is the dispatch program to device and execution. So meaning it has to, the host program is responsible for setting the runtime arguments for these kernels and then use this NQ program API to run the program on the device. Yes, so and then um, the final step is to finish the program execution. So the finish API is used to block any further commands uh, to the device and make sure all the commands that are uh, issued from the command queue are complete. So it, uh, the finish API acts like a barrier. And then finally, there is this NQ read buffer um, API that can be used to retrieve back the data from the device. And then it closes uh, the device. Now look at the, let's look at the actual program itself. The first step in the program is to uh, decide the specific device which we are going to use on the system because a some systems can have multiple devices. So we have this create device API which can select the uh, specific device we are going to use. And then uh, we, can, we have to create this command queue and the program uh, objects. And then we have to specify the uh, parameters for the device like the device coordinates, the tile size, the number of tiles. And once we know the number of tiles and the tile size, we can uh, figure out the DRAM buffer size that is required. Once we have the DRAM buffer size, and we can uh, define the DRAM config using this buffer config uh, API. And then we can use this create buffer API to create the buffers for the source and the destination on the DRAM. Once we define the buffers on the DRAM, we have to define the buffers on the SRAM. Are we, these buffers are circular buffers. So we have to create these circular buffers on SRAM corresponding to all the buffers we have specified on the DRAM. So for that, we have to specify the uh, circular buffer config first and then followed by the uh, buffer definition. And we have to use this um, create circular buffer API to create these buffers. So we are doing this for two of the source uh, buffers and one output uh, buffer. And then in the program, we have to specify the kernel codes which we are going to use. And uh, the first one is the reader kernel and uh, the code where it is going to uh, execute. And then writer kernel and the code where it is going to execute. And the compute kernel. And the compute kernel, uh, we don't need to specify the course because by default it is supposed to execute on the RISC-V 2, 3, and 4 course. And then we have to initialize the data, um, which then can be transferred to the device. So here we are using like create random data and or, or something like create constant data for the two inputs, which I'm going to use um, and uh, add them up on the co on the device later. And also, as you can see, we are using NQ write buffer uh, API to transfer the source data to the device. Once we once we are done with that, we are, uh, we have to set the runtime arguments for each of these kernels. That's what I'm doing here for all the three kernels using this set runtime arguments. Once the, set, uh, once the runtime arguments are set, I can use the NQ program API to execute the code on the device. Finally, uh, we can use this finish prog uh, API um, as a barrier to make sure that uh, the, all, the, all the commands that are issued to the device are complete and no other uh, commands are issued to the device. And once uh, the program is complete, ex its execution, 
we can uh, use this NQ read buffer uh, API to read the uh, results back from uh, the device to the host. Now let's look at the uh, programming model on the device side. So, okay, so when we say the device, we, as you mentioned, uh, it is a core grid and each of them is a 10 6 core. So let's look at one of the 10 6 core and see what is there, uh, I mean, how it can be subcategorized. As you can see here, it, can, it, it has its own um, computation subsystem, the memory subsystem, and then communication subsystem. The communication subsystem is powered by the RISC-V cores and it interacts with the network on chip to move data between uh, the 10 6 cores and also outside the uh, 10 6 cores to the DRAM. And then the compute uh, subsystem, it has um, three baby uh, RISC-V cores and also the matrix and the vector engines. And the another subsystem is the memory subsystem. The memory subsystem within the 10 6 core has the SRAM, which is the L1 memory, but we also have the off-chip uh, DRAM that we use most of the time. Now, let's talk about the programming model on the device side. The device is a grid of 10 6 cores, and each 10 6 core has um, three different subsystems. One, compute, the next is the communication, the third one is the memory subsystem. The communication subsystem has two RISC-V cores and communicates through network on chip with other cores. The computation subsystem has three RISC-V cores and also a matrix and vector engines. And then um, the memory subsystem has the on-chip SRAM and also we have the off-chip DRAM. Now let's look at the communication subsystem of the 10 6 core. The RISC V1 and uh, the RISC V5 cores are responsible for executing these data movement kernels uh, from the SRAM. So RISC V1 uh, usually used as the reader core and the RISC V5 is used as a writer core. But both of these cores has the functionality to read as well as write. So these two cores execute the instructions from the SRAM and then communicate with uh, other cores through NOC. Now, let's look at the computation subsystem of the 10 6 core. The first one is RISC-V2 core. The RISC-V2 core fetches the data from the SRAM, unpacks it, and delivers it to the source registers of the compute engines. In the process, it unpacks the data from FP format like vfloat16 to unsigned integers. In the compute subsystem, the next uh, RISC-V core is the RISC-V3, which is primarily responsible for the compute. It fetches the instructions, uh, compute instructions from the SRAM and the decodes them and issue them to the matrix and vector engines. And the matrix engine is capable of doing matrix multiplication and a dot product for uh, matrix, smaller matrix multipli multiplies like 32 cross 32 or similar. And the vector, uh, vector engine is capable of doing complex math like square root, exponential, GLU, and sorting, and various other complex computations. Now, the next uh, core in the computer system is RISC V4. And the RISC V4 core packs the data from the out destination register and stores it back to the SRAM. In the process, it converts the data format to its original data format. And then the memory subsystem of 10 6 core. The memory is the SRAM, which is also known as the L1 memory, is 1.5 MB on both wormhole and the black hole. This SRAM is accessible by all the cores inside the 10 6 core. And this, uh, the SRAM is capable of uh, storing the data as well as the um, kernels. And uh, the data is stored as the circular buffers. Now let's look at the actual uh, kernel code. The first thing in the kernel code is we need to specify the low level kernel code we're going to use through this .h file. And then uh, we need to specify the circular buffers that we're going to use and then we use an init function to initialize the circular buffers, which initializes the 
data format, hardware counters, and various other things. Then we, we have to use the synchronization functions to make sure that the data is loaded to these circular buffers, like the weight, weight front, to make sure the data is loaded to the input circular buffer. Reverse back to make sure that the output circular buffer is available for us before we start the computation. So now, once we make uh, synchronization is achieved, then the comp actual computation loop starts. As you can see, the compute is happening for the number of tiles we want to uh, execute. So for that, we first have to do use this acquire destination API to acquire the destination register, and then add tiles would add the two tiles we are sourcing to this function. And then pack tile would pack the output and store it in output circular buffer. And then we have to use this release destination API to release the destination, uh, re destination register. So now, uh, again, uh, we again need to use these synchronization functions to synchronize the compute with respect to data movement. So we have the pop uh, front and uh, push back to release, the, uh, ex to release those circular buffers which we have already acquired. Now let's look at the compile and uh, runtime. The compiler uh, takes two inputs. One is the source code, the other one is the Metallium library. The Metallium library involves uh, existing APIs like kernel APIs, data moment APIs, or circular buffer APIs, and things like that. Uh, and the, the source code is the user written code that is expected to work on the TT hardware. And then the output is uh, the host binary code, which consists of the kernel code, the compute kernel code, and the data moment kernel code. And the next thing is the runtime component. So what are the things that has to happen, uh, or the, what are the things that is that uh, the runtime is responsible for. One, the allocate and initialize memory, then dispatch the kernels to the device, and then set arguments, set runtime arguments for the kernels, start device execution, and then collect results uh, back from the device. As you can see here, the first step is to allocate these buffers on the 106 cores or the DRAM cores then set the runtime arguments for all the cores, uh, whichever is involved in execution of the kernels, and then finally, issue the command to execute the program, and then get the results back from the device to the host once the execution is done. Okay, that is the end of this presentation. Thank you for your attention.